Have you ever thought about why we don't use the voltages we commonly see in our homes or industries for transmitting power across long distances? At home, we use 230 volts in single-phase systems or 415 volts in three-phase supply. In industries, even our highest rated load voltage is usually around 11 kV, but when it comes to power transmission, we talk about 132 kV, 220 kV, 400 kV, even up to 765 kV. So the question is, why not transmit power at 11 kV or 415 volts? Why go that high? The answer lies in the advantages offered by high transmission voltage. Let's break it down in this video. First and foremost, high voltage reduces the volume of conductor material required. Let's understand this with a bit of math, but don't worry, I'll say it all out. Suppose you're transmitting a certain amount of power, denoted by P, at a line voltage, V, over a length L. Now, the load current I is given by, I equals P divided by root 3 times V times power factor. And resistance of the conductor R is given by rho into L by A, where rho is the resistivity and A is the cross-sectional area. Now, the total power loss W equals 3 times I squared R. Substituting the values, we get power loss as P squared rho L divided by V squared into cos phi squared into area A. From here, we find that the area A is directly proportional to P squared rho L divided by power loss into V squared into cos pi squared. That means, when voltage V increases, the required cross-section area of conductor decreases drastically. As a result, the total volume of conductor material goes down. Simple takeaway? Higher voltage equals less copper or aluminium, which is equal to lower material cost. Secondly, high voltage increases transmission efficiency. Here's why. When we transmit power, some of it is lost as heat in the conductors. These losses are directly proportional to the square of the current. And current, as we discussed, goes down when voltage goes up. Now, input power equals output power plus total losses. Substituting values again, we arrive at the expression. Efficiency equals output power divided by input power. That simplifies to 1 divided by 1 plus root 3 JPL divided by V cos phi, where J is current density. As you can see, if you increase the line voltage V, the denominator becomes smaller, so overall efficiency increases. So again, higher voltage leads to better efficiency in power delivery. Thirdly, high voltage reduces percentage line drop. Line drop is I into R, which is rho into L divided by A. If we substitute current density, we get percentage drop equals JPL divided by V into 100. This also shows that the line drop decreases as voltage increases, which improves the voltage regulation of the system. Now, everything has a price, and high voltage transmission is no exception. First, the cost of insulation increases. The conductors must be spaced further apart and better insulators must be used to handle the higher voltage stress. Second, the cost of terminal equipment increases, including transformers, switchgear, surge arresters, and more. These costs can sometimes outweigh the savings in conductor material, especially at extremely high voltages. So what's the conclusion? There is a limit to how high we can go with transmission voltage. Beyond a point, the cost of additional insulation, transformer design, switchgear, and other terminal apparatus starts increasing rapidly. These extra costs cancel out the savings made by using less conductor material. That's why in practical systems, we don't just keep increasing the voltage endlessly. In fact, there's a proper method to decide the economically optimal transmission voltage. I've already made a dedicated video on this topic, Economic Choice of Transmission Voltage, where I've explained the formula used to select the right voltage level for transmission systems. It's a must-watch if you want to understand how engineers make real-world decisions based on cost and efficiency. The link is in the description below, so definitely go check it out after watching this video. So now you understand why we don't transmit power at 230 volts or 11 kV like our homes or industries, and why we go all the way up to 400 or even 765 kV. If this explanation helped you understand the reason behind using high voltages in transmission systems, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends who might find it useful. Also, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think our power grid should adopt even higher voltages like 1200 kV, or are we already at the sweet spot? Drop your answer in the comments below. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to Electrology for more such detailed yet simplified videos on power systems. 
If you want to support this channel, check out the thanks button below the video or join our membership for exclusive updates, early access and more. See you in the next episode.